Okay, well, welcome back. So in the last video, we just finished uh, designing the home screen and I haven't actually designed the other screens yet, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do this first. Um, and I have that design sitting next to me on my other laptop, on my work laptop, so I can see that. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna be working on my own laptop to actually turn that first design into code. And we're also gonna um, I talk a tiny, just, just a tiny, tiny bit about which state management solution we're using and why. So as you can probably guess from the title, we are gonna go ahead and use GuessX for this project. For anybody wondering why I'm using GuessX, it is simply because when I looked at which of my videos had the most views, um, well, out of all the videos I've recorded, the one that had the most views was the 10 hour long video I recorded. And that's exactly why I made it, because I figured it would just generate a lot of interest. But that one, aside from that one, by far my most popular video was about GetX. So GetX honestly is not my favorite package, but it seems that a lot of people want to know about GetX. A lot of people must be curious to see what a project written with GetX looks like. So that's why I've decided to go ahead and use that. Um, for me, as far as I'm concerned, they're all kind of the same, all the same management solutions are the same, so I don't much mind. Okay, so I'm in the previous previous project. This was uh, this is just what came up when I opened uh, VS Code, and I'm gonna go to Flutter Create, and what should we call this? Um, movie Browser Tutorial, and of course you guys can just call it Movie Browser, and then we're just gonna wait for this to go ahead and run, and it says all done. So now that we have, but it's not finished because it's not on the um, uh, new line yet. The terminal hasn't finished running. So I'm gonna wait patiently and there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and open that. So that will have gone into, I can't find it. I did something bad that would have put it within this folder, which was not what I intended. So later on, I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna clean that up, but for now, I'm just gonna do CD dash dash or dot dot. What this is gonna do is gonna put me into the uh, parent folder. And now I'm gonna repeat that command. So I'm gonna hit my up arrow two times, three times actually, to get the same command I ran before. Flutter creates and whatever name I used, I already forgot. <laughs> Okay, and this time it was also quite a bit faster, which is nice. And now that we have this, I'm gonna open the folder and it's gonna be over here. And this is just going to be the default uh, starting app for Flutter. So, I'm gonna take this, Control A, delete. I don't need any of this. IMPM, IMPM, uh, void main, run app, my app, my app obviously doesn't exist yet, but we're gonna change that. And before we jump to the next step, let's go ahead and open up Firefox or Google Chrome if you prefer, it's up to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the getx uh, pub.dev, uh, readme or whatever you wanna call it. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're not going to make a material app. We're going to make a GetX app. And I just want, to, want you guys to see what that would look like from here. And by the way, if you guys did see my GetX drama video, which was kind of a quick one, this readme is where the drama occurred. But never mind that. Okay, GetX. Or we'll Get. I can't remember exactly what they call it. Maybe they have the example right here. This is quite a long readme. And as a result, it's not that easy to find what you want to find. By the way, we're going to work with dependency management as well, dependency uh, injection. So that's going to be good. Okay, I can't find it. Here it is. Get material app. So, and hold on. Okay. 
I'm just checking to see exactly how I did it so I don't make some kind of dumb mistake. Uh, so now my app is going to be like class my app as usual. It's going to extend stateless widget as always. Nothing out of the usual so far. Um, override our build function as always. It's all fine. It takes a build context context as always. However, normally we would return a material app, right? What we're going to do here is return a get material app, which of course I would need to import, but I don't have yet because I didn't change anything here. So what I'm going to do instead is control shift P to open up this little window here. Then I'm going to go to add slash update dependencies and just type in get. And what this is going to do is get me this package and the correct uh, number for it, the correct version for it, which is exactly this package then. Okay, so now that I have this, I can uh, control dots and uh, I think I need to reload my window. Dots might didn't save it. That's fine. And if you just give it a second to load, then I can control click and it still does not want to let me do that. Did I misspell something? No, I don't think so. Okay, I'll just import it manually. This will be package get uh, slash get dot dot. I don't know why it doesn't want to import it for me automatically, but whatever. It is what it is. So we're just going to do a debug show checked uh, mode banner false. Uh, initial route is going to be home, which of course doesn't exist yet. And that's all we need for now. Okay. Uh, so get material app. What this is, it's a wrapper around, well, material app, of course. Um, it has, as far as I'm aware, I think it has pretty much all of the same, uh, all of the same. Uh, properties as material app, but it might have a couple extra. I might be missing some. I don't know a hundred percent, so don't quote me on that. But it has most of the same ones. So so far, if we had written material app rather than get material app, there's no difference, right? We don't really have a lot of code there, but these are pretty much interchangeable. The reason we're using get material app instead of material app is because so far with GetX, we've only spoken about the state management part of it, but it has a few different things as well. For example, it has uh, route management and dependency management. So in this tutorial, I think we will briefly cover both of these, but uh, yeah, not quite yet. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and make this home screen, the home screen for which I have my uh, design on the side. So I'm going to create two different folders infrastructure and I'm going to make another folder called presentation and the reason I'm doing this is because I just like to keep my uh, UI stuff separate from my infrastructure stuff and you'll see different folder names for this sometimes I use data domain and UI sometimes data domain um, and uh, presentation or different things like that. Uh, it's just a way of having some kind of separation between our code. Um, but we're not at the point where I really want to go into detail about that. But yeah, putting that aside, I'm going to create a new folder here called state. And in this state folder, I'm going to make a new file called, um, I don't know, state dot dot. Okay, that's fine. Then I'm going to hit new file here and I'm going to call this. In fact, what I'm going to do, because that's putting it in the wrong place. Right click, new file, and this is in, should be in lib. It seems to be in presentation. Let's see. It is in presentation in lib. Okay, 
So I'm just going to create it this way so it puts it in the right place because, you know, it's being kind of awkward. Uh, so I'm going to have the folder name presentation. So that means put it inside the presentation folder. And then we're going to make a new folder called screens. And I'm going to make home screen dot dot. And by writing it like that, you can see it's created the correct folder structure for me. Now I'm going to do IMPM as always, uh, STL. There we go. And this is going to be my home screen. And uh, in state, we're not going to work with it right now. This is where we're going to have our getx controller. And we're going to just have a, well, we're going to have a scaffold. I don't like having that bar. That's just me personally. I think they're a bit ugly, but it's up to you guys. You guys can do it differently. Um, instead, I'm going to have a body, which is going to be a column. Yes, a column, and it's going to have children, and children are going to be expanded, expanded, and expanded. Right. Um, and let me think. I think that's not what I want. I'm just looking at the design on my other screen. I think what I actually want is expanded container expanded. And I'm going to give this a flex of two and the other one a flex of three. So I mentioned it when we were making the design that I like my uh, bottom spacing to be a bit bigger than my top spacing. I think that looks a bit better. So this isn't going to be exactly censored. I don't want it to be exactly censored. Um, okay. So now what I'm going to do is wrap my column in a container. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make that nice gradient. And I just want to uh, pull up an example I have. Because it would be super awkward if I did it incorrectly in front of everybody. In the example I have, I don't have an, a gradient. Um, yeah, okay, it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is say decoration and give this a box decoration. Before this, I'm gonna give it a height of double dot infinity and a width of double dot infinity. Because keep in mind that this container is going to hold our gradient. If we don't have these two properties, uh, the column is going to make it make the height double infinity anyway, but the width is just going to be the width of the column. And the column will not by default take the maximum amount of space. So if we don't have that, then the container will resize itself to be the width of the column, and we won't have the gradients everywhere that we want it. So that would not be good. Okay. And I actually am going to pull up an example because I don't want to do it wrong. Sorry, it's taking a second. I just have too many things everywhere. Okay. So what I'm going to do now actually is within presentation, I'm going to make a new file, which I'm going to call uh, misc slash bg gradients dot dot, right? And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to end up using our background gradient on more than one screen. So there's no point rewriting this code multiple times. Uh, IMPM as always. And we're going to have box decoration. If this looks weird already, the reason we're doing this is because we want exactly this part. So over here, what we're going to do is just say BG gradients like this. So box decoration BG gradients equals box decoration like this. And this takes gradients 
linear gradients and this is just how we're going to make the nice gradients uh, we have a begin which is where the first color will start and I just used top uh, top sensor and bottom sensor but we can do it different ways in fact why don't we do top, um, top hold on, alignment dot top left to make it a bit more interesting and end on alignment dot bottom right so it's going to go kind of diagonally across it's going to be a bit more interesting and then we're going to give this a colors of now to pull out my um, uh, XD thing and the exact color we used was so color dot from RGP zero two zero four two zero eight two three nine opacity one uh, so this is that color which is faded um, and what I'm also going to do while I'm here is make a new file called my colors dot dot in which I'm going to save some colors const map string color my colors equals and we're going to have the first one const string primary equals primary primary color dot from rgp0 and the primary color that we chose is actually 6277196 of passy 1 there we go and then I'm also going to make const string um, if this was a big project I would create the different shades so primary uh, primary shade 300 200 100 and so on and this would probably end up being something like primary shade uh, 200 or 100 because we made it quite pale but instead I'm because we're not going to use too many colors here. I'm just going to make it uh, pale primary BG equals pale primary BG. And this is going to be color from RGP zero. And it's going to be that color that we just used here. This. Okay. So now that we have this, here in our uh, BG gradients, we're instead going to say my colors. And I forgot what I called it. Pale primary BG. Like that. And then colors.white was the other one. Uh, however, I don't know if you guys remember, we actually made it go from that color to white in the center, and then from the center onwards, it was all white. So what we're gonna do is just add colors.white again. So what this is gonna do is, it's just gonna do exactly what I said. Go from this color to white, and then from white to white. So this is gonna space it out the way I want it to be spaced out. If I wanted it to have even more white, I could do this. Uh, you can also give it a different color if you want, if you want something to look different. But I dislike using too many colors. Okay. So now we can import that like that, and that's gonna be our gradient. Um, and then someone excuse the abrupt ending once again. Uh, I just finished recording the the video and it's a bit too long. I'm trying to make myself stop making these massive 40, 40 minutes, uh, one hour video because I know many people don't like them to be too big. So instead I'm going to split up the video I just recorded into two different parts. And this is just me telling you that, yeah.
the next part is going to come tomorrow. So yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I am as well. But in the meantime, myself, Phidias, I'm going to head out. Take care, guys.